Hi guys, welcome to Learn City. My name is Daniel, and today I'll be teaching another topic in biology. Today, our topic is living things and non-living things. Let's go together. So we've established that biology is the study of living things. And we identify living things by their characteristics. So this topic wants to understand what makes a living thing a living thing and what makes a non-living thing a non-living thing. So living things are simply those objects that have life, as their name implies, living things. And the major examples we have are the plants and the animals. Non-living things are the objects that do not have life, the lifeless objects. For example, the door, a table, a chair, a pen. Those are non-living things, objects we find around ourselves every day that don't have, that don't have life. Then I know a question is coming to your mind. How about things that look almost like they have life? For example, robots, computers. So today we're going to be talking about the things that makes an object a living thing and the things that make other objects non-living things. Now let's talk about the characteristics of living things. When we say characteristics of living things, we are talking about the things, the features, the qualities that makes a living thing a living thing. So there's a mnemonic that you can use to remember these characteristics. Mnemonics are simple abbreviations. You can use to remember long things in biology. Biology has a lot of details. And for you to understand and remember those details, you can use mnemonics. One mnemonic you can use is Mr. Niger D. And that's, that is movement, respiration, nutrition, irritability, growth, excretion, and death. Those are the major characteristics of living things. So let's take them one after the other. Movement. Movement. Now let's define what movement is. Movement is the ability of a living organism to move its own body. It could move maybe all the parts of its body or the whole body from one place to another. So movement is just simply what every human being like human beings like me and you do every day. We walk from places to places. And that shows that we are living things. Plants also move. Plants also move in their own way. So movement is the ability of a living organism to move from one place to another. Now, there's a question that, that comes to our mind. Why do living organisms need to move? So living organisms move for, for mates for, to respond to external stimuli. External stimuli such that if there's danger or if there is maybe a pain, if there is whatever, an organism reacts to that by moving either towards that stimuli or away from the stimuli. So that is the purpose of movement. The next characteristic of living things is nutrition. Nutrition. Nutrition is simply the ability of an organism to feed, to enable them carry out their basic functions, such as growth, respiration, and reproduction. So nutrition is just the ability of an organism to feed. That is the simplest way to describe it. The ability of an organism to feed. So many organisms feed in different ways. There are, there are two types of feeding, basically. If we summarize them into just two major parts, we have the autotrophic and the heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition, as the name states, auto, auto, on its own. It doesn't require any other help. So autotrophic nutrition is a method used by plants and some bacteria that involves the manufacturing of food from simple inorganic compounds through a process called photosynthesis. So simply put, autotrophic nutrition is a system of nutrition or a system of feeding in which organisms make their own food themselves. And it's, they do that through a process called photosynthesis. And photosynthesis requires some materials, which is which one major one is chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is found only in green plants and some other bacteria. So chlorophyll helps an organism to feed on its own, to create its own food, to produce, to synthesize its own food. Then the second type of nutrition that we have is called heterotrophic nutrition. It is a method used by animals to obtain food from the product of plants. So basically, heterotrophic nutrition is just feeding directly or indirectly on animals or organisms rather that have created and synthesized their own food. For example, a grass is a green plant. Let's, let's say a guinea grass. It synthesizes its own food. Then a goat feeds on it. Then if a lion feeds on that goat, the goat and the lion are both 
exhibiting what we call heterotrophic nutrition because those organisms cannot manufacture their own food they do so th so they only feed by feeding on other organisms that is where they obtain their own food the next one respiration respiration is simply a process in which food substances within the cell of a living organism are oxidized to release energy for all life's processes so simply put respiration is to produce energy so respiration is the process by which living organisms produce energy and it's a process that all living things must have to go through to survive or to be classified as a living organism and also like other um, characteristics of living things there are two types of respiration we have aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration An anaerobic respiration is simply a process of respiration where the high energy electron acceptor is neither oxygen or pyruvate derivatives simply put what that means is anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen to occur while aerobic respiration is a set of metabolic processes that takes place in the presence of oxygen occurring in a cell so aerobic respiration simply put occurs in the presence of oxygen anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen to occur let's go to the next one excretion excretion is simply the removal of metabolic waste products from the body or cells of a living organisms so the waste products that we're talking about if they are not removed they will be harmful to a living organism so what we mean by excretion is that waste products and the waste products we mean it means for if a substance to be classified as a waste product that has to be excreted it has to be that if it's not removed it's going to be harmful to the body for example excess water excess food so excess water could come out as urine or sweat excess food and other substances could come out as feces so excretion is just the removal of all those waste products that could be otherwise harmful to a living organism so it's also another characteristic of a living thing all living things have to go through that even even plants also excrete they find a way to remove their own metabolic waste products humans and other animals also excrete now let's talk about the next characteristic which is growth growth is simply defined as a permanent increase in body and mass of an organism or increase in body complexity as a result of cell division and cell differentiation so simply put growth is, de is defined as a permanent increase in body it could be in body size it could be in body mass it could be body complexity but the key word there is permanent increase so all living organisms go through a permanent increase in body and that shows that they they are living things and one thing that can easily enhance growth is good feeding so some of these characteristics they go hand in hand good feeding will also bring about good increase in body mass the next one is irritability or sensitivity irritability or sensitivity is another characteristic of living things and it is defined as the ability of an organism to respond to changes in both internal and external stimuli so simply put Irritability is talking about the ability of an organism to respond to changes in probably it could be internal or external. So those changes are actually called stimuli. For example, we could, we could have a change in heat, a change in light, we could have pain. So those are those, those things we call those things are called stimuli, and we have both internal and external. Then, for example, if you're cooking and you try to open the pot and it's hot that jerk back movement where you quickly remove your hand off the pot is a response to stimuli your body is showing irritability then there are also different examples other examples of stimuli we have heat we have light we have pain we have water we have sound and some other chemical substances so living things respond to all those things as stimuli the next one is another very important characteristic of living things which is reproduction this is the ability of an organism to give rise to new offsprings, which have the same characteristics as their parents. So reproduction just ensures the continuity of species. Reproduction is what makes sure a species continues. For example, a lion gives birth to a lion cub, and that is reproduction. That is just an organism giving birth to an organism of its kind, which is called an offspring. And also we have two types of reproduction. We have sexual reproduction, and we have asexual reproduction. A simple way to just define sexual reproduction is that it requires two gametes. 
the male and the female gametes. So if you break that down further, you could just say it requires both the male and the female of the same species to produce a new offspring. Then asexual reproduction involves just one organism to produce another offspring. And the offsprings produced in asexual reproduction are called clones because it just requires one organism to produce another organism of its kind. It doesn't require both male or it doesn't require either male or female. It just requires one organism. The next one of the characteristics of living things is adaptation. Adaptation is a very important characteristic of living things because it is the ability of living organisms to get used to their various environments in such a manner that they are comfortable to survive. So what that means is, for example, a polar bear, it has fur all over its body. And that fur is to protect it from cold because it is found in a very cold region, which is the polar region. Birds have feathers. Feathers enable them to fly because they are found in the air. That is also an adaptation. So that ability of an organism to possess those features that enables it to survive in an environment where it is found, where so that they can be comfortable, is called adaptation. And different organisms have their various adaptations, plants, animals, and that is another important, of, important characteristic of living things. The next one is competition. That's another characteristic of living things. All living organisms to survive, they struggle for all the necessities of life, basically food, mate, light, space, and so on. So that ability to struggle for all those necessities is called